there is a proper procedure for doing a venipuncture. Let's take a look at the proper steps and details you need to pay attention to when performing a venipuncture. The order of steps of phlebotomy are 1. Review the requisition form and wash your hands. 2. Identify your patient properly. 3. Prepare your supplies and labels. 4. Position the patient properly and put on your gloves. 5. Apply the tourniquet to the patient and find the vein you want to use. 6. Properly clean the site where the venipuncture will take place. 7. If the tourniquet has been removed, make sure it is back on before you begin the procedure. 8. Anchor the vein and insert the needle into a vein. 9. Collect the tubes of blood following the proper order of draw. 10. Remove the tourniquet. 11. Remove the needle from the arm and dispose. 12. Place a bandage of the site of the puncture and stop bleeding. 13. Make sure each of the tubes is labeled properly. 14. Make sure the patient is not experiencing any side effects. 15. Dispose of your biohazard material properly. 16. Remove your gloves and wash your hands. 17. End the visit properly. And 18. Document your patient visit. Let's look at each of these steps in detail. Please review our previous video on patient requisition forms in detail. Always make sure that it is filled out completely and that you follow all tests as ordered. You should always wash your hands before each procedure. If there is visible contamination on your hands, you must use soap and water. If there is no visible contamination present, you may use a medically approved hand sanitizer. The CDC recommends a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol content to be effective. Identify your patient properly with at least two points of identification being obtained. In addition, make sure that you ask proper history questions related to the visit. Details on this component are found in our previous video. Prepare your supplies and make sure they are close to where you can reach them. It does you no good to have them across the room from where you are performing the procedure. Always have extra supplies on hand in case you need them. You don't want to have to do the procedure twice because you did not prepare properly. Please put on your gloves and position the patient. Proper patient positioning is key to a safe and smooth blood draw. The patient should always be seated comfortably in a chair with arm support or lying down if they have a history of fainting or dizziness. The arm being used for the draw should be extended and supported, usually palm up with no tension. Make sure the patient's feet are flat on the floor and they're relaxed with no twisting or leaning. Good positioning helps prevent injury, ensures vein access, and reduces the risk of fainting or sudden movement during the procedure. Always choose safety first, especially if the patient seems anxious or unstable. When applying a tourniquet, place it three to four inches above the intended puncture site, which is typically on the upper arm. Wrap it snugly, but not too tight. It should restrict venous flow to help the veins fill, but not cut off arterial circulation. You should still be able to feel a radial pulse below the tourniquet. Keep it on for no more than one minute before drawing blood to avoid discomfort and inaccurate results. If you need to place the tourniquet on to find the vein you want to use, take it off and replace the tourniquet once again before beginning the blood draw. Once you've selected your vein, release the tourniquet as soon as blood starts flowing into the first tube, unless your protocol says otherwise. Always explain what you're doing and check in with the patient for comfort. When it comes to selecting a vein for venipuncture, not all veins are created equal. In general, you want to go for the largest, straightest, and most stable vein that's easy to access and causes the least discomfort. The first choice is the median cubital vein that is located in the middle of the antecubital space and is usually large, well-anchored, and easy to find. The second choice is the cephalic vein, found on the thumb side of the arm. It's often a good backup, especially in larger patients. The third choice is the basilic vein, which is on the pinky side. It's close to nerves and the brachial artery, so use it with caution. Avoid veins that are small, hard, rolling, or near joints. Also skip any areas that are bruised, scarred, or where there's a current IV. Take your time, palpate with purpose, and don't be afraid to ask for help if you can't find a safe option. Vein selection isn't just about getting blood, it's also about doing it safely and with care. Next, clean the site for the venipuncture. 
you want to use a 70% alcohol solution or betadine-based solution. If you are doing a blood culture, you must use a betadine or chlorhexidine solution to cleanse the site. The current and best method for cleansing the site is to go back and forth with the cleansing solution for approximately 30 seconds and allowing it to air dry before moving on. The CLSI now recommends this as the most effective method and the circular method taught in the past as less effective or recommended. As you may only leave the tourniquet on for one minute, it may require you to remove the tourniquet and reapply it again right before you puncture the skin with the needle. Do not leave the tourniquet on if you are prepping materials as you may go over the one minute mark. Properly anchoring the vein is key to a smooth, safe blood draw. Once you've selected your site, use your non-dominant hand to gently pull the skin taut below the puncture site, typically about one to two inches below where the needle will go in. This keeps the vein from rolling and helps stabilize it during insertion. Your thumb should stay below the puncture site and never across it. This helps to avoid accidental needle sticks. The goal is to create just enough tension to keep the vein in place without causing discomfort. A good anchor reduces the risk of a missed vein, makes the draw easier, and helps keep your patient calm and still. When it's time to insert the needle, make sure the bevel is facing up and the needle is aligned with the vein. This means that the lumen or opening of the needle is facing upwards. This allows for the easiest needle insertion and causes the least tissue damage. Hold the needle steady like a dart and insert it at a 15 to 30 degree angle and just enough to enter the skin and vein without going too deep. A common mistake is going in too steep or too shallow, which can cause a mist vein or even go through it. Insert the needle smoothly and confidently, not too fast, but not hesitant either. You'll usually feel a slight give when you enter the vein. Once you see a flash of blood in the hub, if your needle has that feature, you know you're in the right spot. At that point, keep the needle stable and move on to connecting your tube, one after another if needed, without adjusting or fishing around. Clean insertion with the right angle and depth keeps the draw safe, efficient, and comfortable for the patient. Once the needle is in place and secure, you'll start collecting blood using vacutainer tubes. Gently push the first tube into the hub. You'll feel the needle puncture the stopper and blood should begin to flow. Let each tube fill completely to ensure the correct blood to additive ratio, especially for tubes containing anticoagulants or preservatives. Follow the correct order of draw to prevent cross-contamination between additives. We won't list that here, but it's important to memorize. Never switch tubes too quickly and avoid removing and reinserting the same tube. Once a tube is full, remove it before inserting the next and keep the needle steady throughout. After collection, gently invert tubes that require mixing, usually about five to 10 times, depending on the tube type. Don't shake the tubes that can damage the cells and affect the test results. Using vacutainers properly helps protect specimen quality and ensures reliable lab results. Remove the tourniquet. If it was placed properly, you should be able to remove it with one hand. Then withdraw the needle from the patient's arm smoothly and at the same angle it was inserted. Never twist or jerk it. Immediately apply pressure to the site with a gauze pad and have the patient hold it firmly. Activate the needle safety feature right away and dispose of it in the sharps container without setting it down. Remember to have your sharps container close by. Immediately cap your needle and dispose of it in a sharps container without ever setting it down. Have the patient place gauze over the puncture site. Make sure you ask them to hold this firmly over the site for me. Giving clear instructions to your patient helps them to know how they should proceed, and it frees up both of your hands to clean up the procedure. Always label the tubes immediately after the draw and in front of the patient to prevent any mix-ups. Each label should include the patient's full name, date of birth, date and time of collection, and your initials. Most of the information is likely on a pre-printed label for you place on the tube, but initial the label. Place the label lengthwise along the tube, not wrapped around it like a sticker. This ensures the barcode can be scanned and the tube can spin properly in the centrifuge. Make sure the label is not covering the colored cap or hanging off the end of the tube as it will be broken when put in the centrifuge, making the information on it difficult to read. Finally, double check the information before sending it off. 
A properly labeled tube keeps the sample connected to the right patient and protects the accuracy of the results. After the blood draw is complete, take a moment to observe the patient before they leave. Make sure they're not feeling dizzy, lightheaded, or faint, especially if they've had issues in the past or seem nervous. Check that the vena puncture site has stopped bleeding and looks normal. If it goes longer than five minutes, you may need some additional first aid. Check to make sure there is no swelling or rapid bruising. Ask the patient how they're feeling and give them a minute to sit or rest if needed. If they mention feeling off or look pale or unsteady, have them sit longer or lie down and notify a nurse or supervisor if needed. Never rush them out. Patient safety always comes first. Remove gloves and wash hands properly and end the visit with the patient. Make sure they know how to find out their results and if they have a follow-up visit. Always document the visit in the patient's chart.